2021 is finally here and I'm so glad that 2020 is over with. To start the year off right, I wanted to show you 20 amazing apps that you probably didn't even know existed. A lot of them are also free to download and none of them are sponsored or in other words have paid me to include them in this video. I genuinely think that every single one of these apps are fantastic no matter how many downloads they have, so thumbs up for that. I've also been doing this yearly series for over 6 years now so if you want to binge watch the previous years after watching this video, the playlist will be in the right corner. If you'd like to watch this video or other videos that I made in Spanish, be sure to go to my second channel called How To Men In Español, link is in the description. Anyways, it's a tradition to show off a beautiful wallpaper before jumping to the apps. This year I found this background with an outer space theme and with a pinwheel in the middle. It honestly fits in perfectly with the planets and bubbles and the colors give it this fun and poppy look. It also has this grain effect to make the picture look vintage and no matter what widgets or icons that I use, the wall suits it well. I found it within an app called TruePix Prime, it's called Grain Art 4. If you don't like it, they also have a ton of other amazing backgrounds to apply and the app can also give you a few setup ideas. You do have to pay to unlock the full version, but I'll be giving away 30 promo codes to unlock it for free on my Twitter and Instagram at HowToMed, so make sure to follow me there. Now the first app of 2021 is Beta Maniac. For those of you who don't know, in the Play Store some apps have a beta program that you can join so that you can get the newest features before it gets released to the public. But it's kind of hard to figure out which of your apps have a beta program. If you use Beta Maniac, it'll scan all of your installed apps and quickly tell you which of your apps have an open beta program. And you can even join it within the app itself. On top of that, some of the Play Store apps limit the number of people who can join their beta program. So once they're full, you can't participate unless some users leave or the developer expands the limits. Beta Maniac will scan the beta programs periodically and will send you a notification once a closed beta program opens back up. It's extremely useful and I've never found myself uninstalling it. If you're annoyed by apps or websites having intrusive ads or want to protect your privacy by blocking malware, tracking, phishing, etc., you can use Personal DNS Filter to block any ads and filter out unwanted hosts within your apps or websites. Just by allowing it to make a VPN connection and making sure the enable blocking is checked, the app will block those unwanted scripts. You can also whitelist apps to support developers who aren't overusing pop-up ads. And honestly, the best part about this app is that it's on the Play Store and it's entirely free. These type of apps usually tend to get removed from the Play Store, so I'll be sure to put a mirror link just in case. For this next app, you're going to want to pull out your old family pictures because it will let you turn your black and white photos into a colorized digital picture. The app is called Colorize and within it, and within it you just press and hold the record button. It'll scan, crop, and colorize the photograph, and then you can save it to your device or share it. It honestly works like magic and works really well. It also shocks me how this app has less than a thousand downloads, especially since it has unlimited photo colorization and you can save or share your colorized pictures as many times as you'd like. Just keep in mind that the app does have a 3D trial, so I would scan all of my photos right away if you're trying to avoid buying a subscription. A cool feature within iOS 14 is that you can double tap or even triple tap the back of the iPhone to launch a certain task, such as the camera, flashlight, shortcut, etc. Android phones don't have this feature, but you can download an app called TapTap to get it. So I set my phone to launch Google Assistant when I double tap the back, and if I double tap it again immediately after, it'll launch another task such as switching to my last used app. I can even enable a triple tap action to launch something else like the camera app or snappy screenshot. Within tap tap, you can customize the actions, have certain restrictions of when the taps shouldn't be enabled, such as when the screen is off, because that would be annoying, and even change the sensitivity of the gesture. It's not on the Play Store, but it is still free to download off GitHub. With most of you using headphones to listen to music, you may not be getting the full audio listening experience. To begin with, stock Android doesn't even have an equalizer, so you can't even optimize your sound. And even if it did, there are so many headset models out there that a simple equalizer with a few presets still wouldn't give you the best quality possible. That's why you should download Wavelet since the app supports over 2700 pre-calculated presets for specific headphone models. So within the app, once you've connected to your headset, wireless or not, an option will pop up called Auto EQ. You'll be able to search for your headphone model, and if you find it, your sound will be a lot more neutral, canceling out any manufacturer specific preset equalization. I've managed to find a headphone profile for my Galaxy Buds Plus, and now the sounds have a much more richer tone. If you'd like to increase the bass or 
to get more effects, you'll need to make an in-app purchase to unlock all of the app's features. I'm not gonna lie, whenever I connect to a Bluetooth device such as my speakers or headphones, the process is pretty annoying. I need to jump into the settings, go through various menus, and tap on the Bluetooth device just to connect to it. Now, with Bluetooth audio device widgets, I no longer need to do that. I just place a widget on my home screen that will automatically connect to my desired Bluetooth device just by tapping on it. And once I'm done jamming out, I can just tap on it again to disconnect. Pretty useful, and within the app, I can even enable a quick settings tile, set a specific volume level, etc. Moving on, I'm not sure if you know this, but whenever you grant an app access to your phone's camera or microphone, they can use it silently in the background. It's kind of scary. That's why I downloaded Access Dots, which puts a dot in the top right corner of the screen for whenever your camera or microphone is being used. The green dot is for the camera, and the orange one is for the microphone. Simple and necessary. If you ever wanted to customize your status bar, the best way to do so is with Super Status Bar. This app adds a ton of useful features to it. For example, I can change the brightness or volume level by just swiping left or right on it. I can get a preview of my notifications without having those obtrusive heads up pop-ups. OG Android users will remember this from the Android Lollipop days. You can also change the theme of the status bar, such as having it look like iOS, Samsung's One UI, Mi UI, etc. You can change the color and have the color match the theme of the app that you opened, have a battery bar to show you the battery level of your device, and even have gestures such as tapping on the status bar to do certain tasks or launch apps. You won't find any other app that does it better than Super Status Bar. Now that you modified your status bar, you can use volume styles to change up the look of your volume panel. The best part is that it's been created by the same developer who created the previous app. You can make your volume controls look like the ones found within iOS, One UI 3, MIUI, Oxygen OS, Windows 10, the old iOS volume panel. You can have a volume knob. I mean, the list goes on and on. And these sliders are very fluid and change the volume level instantly. It works so well that I sometimes even forget that it's an app that did this. The best part is that they even have community styles so you can use other people's creations to get a fresh look uh, every so often. That's why I love using this over the competition. Plus you can customize a lot more such as adding a brightness slider, changing its position, dimming the background, etc. Now before I move on to the next best app of the year, I wanted to give a shout out to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. Every phone that I've used this year has been skinned to provide a bit more personalization, uniqueness, or to make each phone a bit more grippy. They have a wide variety of skin textures to choose from. Two of my favorites are the pastel and matrix skins. They give the phone a professional and minimalistic look at the same time. But if you prefer the protection over the looks, you can pick up their grip cases, which are extremely heavy duty and the grippiest cases you can get. So go to dbrand.com slash how to men or just click the link in the description if you'd like to customize your phone's back. If you ever wanted to share your internet connection between your phone and computer, Tetrid is the best option. But just enabling USB debugging from within the developer options, connecting your phone to your desktop with a USB cable, downloading their server application to your PC, download link is in the description, and then within the app, pressing connect and then your preferred tether mode, you'll be able to browse the web on your computer using your phone's mobile data. or you can scroll through Instagram on your phone using the Wi-Fi connection from your computer. This is perfect if your carrier doesn't allow you to have an unlimited hotspot, or if your phone is having a hard time connecting to your Wi-Fi, but your computer has a stable connection since it's connected via an ethernet cable. Do you ever wonder if your phone is silently killing apps in the background when you lock your device? Or how fast or frequently it kills those apps? Well, with a benchmark app called Don't Kill My App, it will let you know if your phone is overkilling background tasks while the screen is off. You just tap on start benchmark and select how long you'd like the test to run for, the longer the better. Once you start the test, you shouldn't charge your phone or use it until the time is up, otherwise you may not get the most accurate results. You can end it early if you prefer and once the test is finished, you'll get a score. The closer you are to 100%, the better since it'll indicate that your phone is doing a great job of handling background apps. Otherwise, if you have a low rating and a ton of random white space in the graph, you'll know that your phone is overkilling. And if that's the case, the app will let you know how to limit background restrictions. I've tried it on most of my devices and I found that OnePlus phones are the worst at handling background apps. I know some of you love to customize your home screen, but keeping up to date with all the latest customization apps such as wallpapers, icon packs, widgets, etc. can be a bit tough. Luckily, an app called Bitlet keeps you up to date. It'll inform you of every app update, promo code giveaways, new app launches, etc. and they categorize everything really well. 
Trust me, I've discovered so many phenomenal customization apps, and it's awesome to know which apps still have an active developer. Plus, it's completely free with no ads. If you continuously receive spam notifications or want a better way to control your notifications instead of just turning them off completely, check out Buzzkill. It's a notification manager that lets you create automated actions, and when a notification matches a rule, it'll follow it. For example, one of the rules that I created is that when I receive a notification from the phone app that contains the keywords missed or call, then it'll remind me to call them back every 30 minutes. Or if someone messages me multiple times in quick successions, I can have them only buzz me once instead of numerous times. Those are just a few examples. The possibilities are endless. And the best part is that there are a ton of pre-created rules that can be enabled quickly under the Explore tab. If you have a big phone, then you'll know the struggle of trying to use it with one hand. I got sick of the hand repositioning, so I downloaded Quick Cursor. This app helps me reach those top areas in the screen real easily since a cursor will pop up whenever I swipe from the edges of the screen. I can drag it around to move the cursor and tap on it to click. The D-pad then disappears when I tap away from it. It's perfect for when I try to tap on Instagram stories or reach the top toolbar. The only annoyance is that those back gestures can't get in the way if you're on Android 10 or above, so you'll need to expand the trigger size to an appropriate amount to avoid any overlaps. If you're looking to transfer some big files quickly and easily, Smash File Transfer is a fantastic option. The app is extremely straightforward. You just tap on the Smash button and select the file or files that you'd like to send. Once it finishes uploading, you can share the link with anyone, including desktop users, and then you can download the files easily. It has no file size limits, no compression, the files are available to download for an entire week, and your transfer data stays encrypted. It's simple, free, and no sign-in is needed. If you've been looking for an alternative browser because you're tired of using Chrome, check out Vivaldi Browser. It's mostly focused on your privacy and has many unique features that most browsers don't have. You get an ad blocker, native protection against ads, you can force enable dark mode on all sites. There's a tab bar interface to switch between your tabs easily, screenshot a web page without grabbing the entire screen, and a lot more. The browser is also very snappy. I had no trouble scrolling through large web pages or opening multiple links at a time. It's one of my new favorite browsers. If you own a curved phone and frequently find yourself having accidental palm touches, Edge Block is your hero. It just blocks the touch screen on the edges of your screen, and depending on how much curve your screen has, you can increase the width of the blocked area. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. There are hundreds of thousands of games on the Play Store that you can download, and most of the good ones are hidden deep within the trenches. So if you're tired of the Play Store's lack of game discoverability, check out Mini Review. This app is run by an Android gamer who's also a YouTuber, and he reviews a ton of games within this app. You'll be able to tell how amazing a game is through a 10 point rating system. There's a brief description of the author's overall experience, and a 5 star rating on the controls, gameplay, monetization, etc. The best part is that you can filter the search results to find your favorite type of games. Honestly, it's helped me find some extremely addicting gems and it's much more pleasant to use than the Play Store's somewhat biased interface. If you tend to use multiple cloud storages, you can sync them all up using AutoSync. You need to log into whatever storage devices you have, whether it be Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Mega, etc. Then you'll create a folder within your phone storage and within your cloud storages called AutoSync. This can be done through the app. Then every time you put something in that folder, whether it be your phone storage or the cloud storage, that file will automatically sync to everything. Last but not least, if you ever want to lock the screen of your phone or tablet, say you're giving it to a toddler to watch a movie or play music and you don't want them to accidentally start messing with your apps, I recommend you download Touch Locker. It puts a notification in your notification panel and whenever you want to lock the screen, you just tap on the lock button and that's it. To unlock the screen again, you just swipe down on the status bar and press the unlock button. The app does have a pro version, so I'll be giving away a whopping 100 promo codes thanks to the developer. So again, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Anyways, that concludes the 20 best Android apps of 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed my selection. If you did, please drop a thumbs up and get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. I promise I release quality content every single week. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at HowToMen for those promo codes. Don't forget to check out those dbrand skins, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!